Hey witches, this is Hecteria. So this is the Intuitive Astrology Tarot Divination and Hecatean Hecate Gnosis Oracle Insights. Okay. For the September 30th through October 1st Dark Moon New Moon what everyone is calling the black moon. Uh, let me just break that down real quick. At the beginning of this, a blue moon occurs when there's two full moons in one month. And it's usually at the beginning of the month and the end of the month. And uh, usually there's only one full moon and one dark moon each month in the Gregorian calendar. Uh, so when another one occurs in one month, they call it a blue moon and that's why they have the saying once in a blue moon because it usually happens like maybe once every two or three years in Gregorian calendar. Now the black moon happens when there's two dark moons happening in one month. So on the 1st of September we had the solar eclipse which was the dark moon and now we're having the next dark moon which is the black moon. So, I mean, they really say that it brings double energies uh, of what a dark moon is, just like the blue moon brings amplified energy of what a full moon does. Uh, so, that's just to break that down at the beginning of this. I don't really know my beliefs on... Uh, the blue moons and dark, uh, black moons or whatever because that's only applied really to the Gregorian calendar and really if you go back to the ancient pagan calendars they were all lunar calendars so I don't know I've not really analyzed all this that much myself or come to my own beliefs about it but just wanted to put that in here so let's just get right into the astrology for this uh dark moon so it's in Virgo okay and we can see that the moon Jupiter and the Sun are all together and I just have it on the 30th at the current time right now so every time that there's a new moon a dark moon new moon which is the same thing uh, astronomically speaking, they call the dark moon the new moon on calendars, but the new moon is actually when uh, the moon starts waxing from the dark moon phase. But again, I digress. I'm not trying to break that all down in this video. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's the dark moon, okay? And every month on the dark moon, the moon conjuncts the sun, okay? What makes it a solar eclipse is when the moon goes directly over the sun uh, from our perspective on Earth. But every single dark moon, the moon conjuncts the sun and that brings the double energy of masculine and feminine, okay? The sun represents your um, projective, your ego, uh, the way you present yourself to others the way you are to others and the moon represents your internal self, your spiritual self, uh, your receptive nature, your spirituality, uh, all of that, your emotions. So when we have a dark moon once a month, we have these energies combined, okay? And so every time that there's a dark moon, we have an energy of kind of a healing uh, processing uh, from both aspects of ourself, okay? So just keep in mind that that energy is in play with every single dark moon. Now, what makes you be able to narrow it down astrologically is the fact of what constellation is it happening in? Is there any other planets nearby? This is happening in Virgo. Virgo is the sign of your home life, your, uh, your body, your health, 
your security and finances, your stability. So what we have with this um, dark moon is what I'm getting is that this is about healing. There is a deep healing that is possible. Um, or that will just be happening naturally with astrology. Of course, as with all things, your intention, your consciousness, your awareness can amplify the results and uh, take you deeper. Okay, so this is also happening conjunct with Jupiter. And Jupiter is the planet of good fortune. It's a planet of expansion. Jupiter expands and amplifies anything it touches. So, that's kind of hilarious in a way because... Um, okay, I call it hilarious because it's just funny to me how uh, what Hecate tells me always lines up with the astrology. I had made a post earlier on Facebook where I was saying what Hecate had told me for this dark moon uh, is that it will bring immense healing and uh, blessings as an energetic gateway is opened for our ancestor spirits to come through and really heal and bless us. And this is a recompense for this entire past year, the trials and challenges that we face. And with this past uh, eclipse season, the transformation and changes that we've been going through have really called forth uh, some deep work, okay? So th from this dark moon forward, but especially from this dark moon, we will be receiving um, an energy of deep healing from all that, okay? So, uh, this is, once again, lining up with what Hecate told me because we see that Jupiter is conjunct with this. And so, this is going to be a deep and immense healing and blessing as we go forward, okay? Um, and that's to do with your health, your security, your home life, your finances, your uh, creativity, your connection with the divine, your uh, just yourself, your total self, okay, in your personal life, all right? So, that was the astrology part of this video, and I just wanted to put that at the beginning like I always do, and then I'll be right back with the tarot reading. Alright, so I'm back with the tarot reading now, you guys, and I just want to let you know, uh, I should have included this at the beginning, but I am not going to do a weekend reading for this weekend because this dark moon energy uh, is going to go through the weekend, uh, into next week even. I will do the weekly reading for next week, but I'm not going to do a weekend reading because this energy is just very strong and dominant over this weekend. Okay. Let's get into this. And now I align myself with the Most High God and the Holy Spirit, Hecate. Please communicate the truth to me through these cards so that I may be guided for the highest good of all. Please give me your guidance for this dark moon. Thank you and some other pain. Okay, y'all. Let me try to turn this down some. Okay. So, let's just get right into this. 
the card that we have representing us. Okay, the card that we have representing us is the Five of Wands. So, this is about standing your ground in things, okay? We've been going through a lot of transformations. We've been going through a lot of changes uh, in our uh, way that we deal with people in just our own kind of relationship to the world around us and to others, okay? Kind of like we've changed our stance with relationships, but also just with life in general and the way that we're approaching things. So this card is a reminder to stand your ground with those changes. So this may be kind of a warning that uh, other people are going to kind of try us and um, try to get us to uh, revert back to the old ways of doing things or the old way of dealing with things. Or they're just going to assume that uh, we will deal with it in the old way. And um, if that happens to you, then make sure that you stand your ground. Make sure that you um, stay true to yourself, okay? And um, don't seek for battling. Don't seek for argument and fighting. Because there is a high potential for that. Uh, but make sure that you do stand your ground and just do it in a... peaceful way, okay? Or at least try to. Um, at the same time, though, this card does uh, give a message that there is a chance for cooperation and reconciliation. It's kind of a small chance, though, so just be aware of that, okay? So for the card that we have in the present position, we have the King of Cups. And so this means that emotions are running high right now. So now that makes sense of why this card, the beginning, um, anytime that emotional energy is high, there's a chance of arguments and things like that. Okay, so this card is just uh, letting us know that that energy is present in the environment right now, in our surroundings, and the people around us, in ourselves. And we need to make sure that uh, we keep a rein on our emotions. That doesn't mean to suppress them, but it just means to make sure you keep your sound mind and your logic along with that. And when it, whenever it comes to expressing yourself, you might want to hold back a little bit uh, on how far you go, okay? So now this is making more sense with this card of standing your ground with things, but don't get too emotional about it, okay? Just let it just stand your ground, but do it calmly and logically. Okay, don't do it from a place of emotion. Do it from a place of uh, just firmness in your decision and from logic and reason, okay? Uh, and at the same time, other people are watching us right now. Whoever's watching this video, okay? This is for everyone who's watching this video. Other people are watching us and they're looking at us as an example Um so, to clarify on that, whatever changes that you're doing or that you've gone through, other people are taking notice. Maybe people who don't have the courage to do what you're doing right now are watching you. And if you handle yourself with grace, you may inspire them to begin to do the same thing, okay? But if you don't handle yourself with grace, if you start acting emotional and... Uh, falling into kind of aggressive patterns and stuff like that, um, you, you may end up scaring them off from trying to make some changes in their life too, okay? So that's the energy that's present. There is a potential for, he for healing with this, okay? Healing others just by example. Crossing us, we have the High Priest, what's in this deck called the Holy Father, I have a grotesque fascination with this card, honestly. <laughs> okay. But anyway, the meaning of this card is about um, tr 
tradition. Since it's in the crossing position, I'm going to go ahead and interpret it as a warning. Um, there's an energy of intimidation using fear as a way of controlling, okay? So, uh, be aware that other people might try to do that to you. You might be getting some threats. You might be getting uh, aggressive, um, projective energy from others. That is basically them trying to intimidate you, okay? So, just be aware that that is some kind of an energy that's, that's going on that may block you from progress. Um, and also, too, you yourself don't want to fall into that kind of energy um, over others. There's nothing wrong with um, a fiery energy if you apply it towards your own passion and uh, your own ambitious drives, whatever. But you don't want to project that onto others in an aggressive way uh, when it's unwarranted, okay? So that is coming up as a warning. Now, beneath us, we have the Justice card. And this is about balance being achieved. Recently, we have come into a balance, okay? We've come into a harmony. For some of us um, watching this video, I should say for some of y'all watching this video, you may not fully understand the forces that have brought you into balance yet. So, go ahead and use this dark moon to process uh, process that. Maybe do some rituals or some meditations uh, to ground yourself, okay? And uh, center yourself. I'm seeing centering and grounding. Do some rituals or meditations beneath the tree where you really align your spine and your chakras with it. And just let yourself take in that earthy energy, okay? To bring a grounding and centering effect. Okay. In the past, the Knight of Swords. So I've see, I'm seeing that you all have been really making some swift progress towards uh, where you want to go, towards your ambitions, towards your goals. You've been taking uh, creative ideas. And turning them into reality. You've been ingenious and clever. And just basically taking whatever it is that you wanted. And you've been manifesting that. So keep on doing what you're doing. But this card, once again, it carries a warning of not rushing into things at the same time. So, make sure that whatever you do, you do take the time to plan it out properly. Um, and kind of uh, think outside the box of what could go wrong. Or what just might not work out. And have other plans as well. Along with your original plans, okay? Just in case. Good luck happens. When we have done good planning and preparation and opportunity comes to us, okay? That's what good luck is. Crowning us is the seven of coins. So, this kind of goes along with this card of not rushing into things. Uh, the seven of coins is about patience. It's about taking things slowly. Um, continuing to work towards your goals and to work towards the future that you're creating for yourself. But doing it slowly, steadily, with a lot of thought and love and attention to detail that's been put into it, okay? So do not rush things. Uh, let things continue to build up slowly. You are making progress. It may not be at the uh, speed that you wish it was. But at the same time, with this card in the past, there has been quick results. So, 
I'm getting more of the energy with this card of just be patient uh, with your long term long term goals and make sure that you are really planting the seeds of what you want to manifest and make sure that you are tending to that process um, like as if you're growing a garden you have to make sure that you uh, put work into it constantly you have to put your love and care into it constantly whatever your goals are just be aware of that that it's a daily process and a daily thing that you need to focus on and you will see amazing results from that in the future position we have the eight of wands and okay well maybe things will go faster then it seems because we have this card talking about things going fast uh, and now this card is emphasizing that the eight of wands is once again it's about swift progress towards your goals now this is also about uh, communications coming in and going out it's about uh, messages exchanged telephone calls emails all of that uh, just talking in person as well there's a lot of messages that will actually bring you uh, closer to your goals, okay? So be aware of that. Maybe that's what you need to put your attention into is these communications, okay? Uh, some of y'all will be receiving um, messages of love, affection, and appreciation. And new relationships are coming in, okay? And that means all kinds of relationships. And the persona position is the three of swords. So, kind of this goes with the first card, the first two cards, I should say. Uh, don't allow yourself to be dragged back into old ways of being. You have come a long way since you've been transitioning and changing. We all have. And you don't want to, like, revert back to old ways of being, okay? And how you were in that time, you were not happy. So make sure that you don't do that. Uh, this person thinks that he's trapped on the side of the cliff or whatever and the woman's over here who's like happy and celebrating kind of reminiscent of the three of wands and uh it's really like he's separating himself from that okay so be aware of negative energy y'all remember that the the dark moon the new moon is the time of planting the seeds for what you for what you want to manifest so make sure that you don't revert into any kind of negative thinking patterns or anything like that or uh, emotions or attitudes, okay? Make sure that you keep it focused on the positives and on creating what you do want. For the outside influence is the page of swords. And this is about uh, how others see us. We bring a lot of ideas, inspiration, and insight and messages to others. Uh, and they really kind of look at you as a messenger, okay? Now, obviously, that makes sense for me as, as a tarot reader on YouTube. But this is going for anyone who's watching this, these videos, uh, or this video in particular. Um, you're kind of like a inspiration to others, a muse. And be aware of that power, okay? Because kind of with uh, these cards over here, it was letting you know about how people look at you kind of as an example. So you want to make sure that you're putting out uh, the right image, the right message, okay? Now, in our hopes and fears, we have the Four of Wands. So, I'm taking this as a hope and a goal. 
we need to bring things to completion, okay? Whatever you've been working on, um, keep going, keep doing it, because you're actually a lot closer to com to reaching completion than you think you are, okay? Because remember this card was about swift progress. And remember that that's in the future after it gave us this message of staying focused, okay? So as long as we stay focused on our goals and achieving what we're trying to achieve, um, the results will come much faster than we think and it will come to a completion, okay? And this is about your security, your abundance, your health, your home life, your family, your relationships, okay? And as the final card, we have the Hanged Man. So this is about reaching a new perspective, a new mindset, a higher perspective and a higher mindset above uh, challenges and issues, okay? Um, and by doing that, by reaching that new level of uh, mindset, of a, a new approach, a way of doing things, um, a perspective that's actually a spiritual one, we uh, will overcome any challenges and obstacles, okay? So when I look at all this entire reading together, it very much is reminiscent of what Hecate's guidance was, what the astrology said, and what the very first card was saying. So anytime that I see the first card and the outcome card match up, uh, I know that the energy is very, very strong. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep going. Uh, keep putting that effort in daily, okay? You have seen results already by doing so. So keep putting that effort in daily. Keep doing it each moment uh, into your relationships, into your work. And you will see amazing results uh, for your health, your home life, your security, your abundance, okay? So I hope that this reading helps you. I hope that you all have an amazing black moon, dark moon. I hope that you plant the seeds for what you want to manifest. And I hope that you keep working towards your goals with love and attention to details, okay? Hail to the witches. Hail Hecate. And blessed be.